So, four horsemen of the apocalypse. Right. Which one would you be? Oh, I'm death. There's no question. Go on the white horse. Yeah, that's me. We've already decided that. Um, we decided a long time ago, like Tony's War, and obviously Paul's Pestilence, and then, um, and then what's the other one? Uh, pestilence and famine. Famine. Yeah. Well, Audrey's famine. When the Four Hornsmen agreed to be the subject of a documentary I was making, I was delighted but intimidated at the same time. Hey, how's it going? I knew that interviewing would be difficult. I knew that some would be more open than others. I'll let one of the other guys handle this question. I'm not doing that. Do you want me to tell you about each one individually? And some of my questions would be avoided completely. Um, I have an orange. But each of your corrals has a story. Kind of top secret. Yeah, I, maybe, yeah, that's where we go. It's top secret. Right. I can't say. Okay, I mean, man. <laughs> I think you're done. <laughs> what started out as an experiment in filming and editing soon turned into a learning experience for me as a fellow musician. So what did I learn? Don't give up. Quit now? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Listen to music. One of the worst things students do, or don't do, is listen to music. I, I can't emphasize enough on how important it is, not just to practice, but to go home and put a CD in, listen to the articulations, listen to the little nuances that make professionals professionals. You kind of have to have a thick skin to try to be a professional horn player. Sometimes it's best to keep your, your inappropriate comments and save them for a bar. <laughs> As valuable as these pearls of wisdom were, what impressed me most about the quartet was the use of humor in their music, even in the midst of preparing for their first ever appearance at the International Horn Symposium in Macomb. Thank you guys, and thanks for coming to our informal concert. That was the first joke. The last piece we're going to play is a piece uh, by our, our esteemed, uh, what do you call it, ex-professor, what do you call it? Do what? Oh, old man? We <laughs> <laughs> will dedicate this to his retirement. This is the to his memory. To his memory. <laughs> Speaking of our recently retired horn professor, one of the sources of the quartet's comedic and jovial tendencies is the coaching of Dr. Kaz Makala. Especially, I find him to be much pickier with the quartet, and that part of that might be because he wrote the main piece we play, Intuition and Signal. He knows everything about it because he wrote it, so that might be why. And when we talk to the audience, he'll sit there and say, take a look, man, this is not it, no. And he'll point out, you need to make eye contact, you need to smile at the audience, even if you're scared to death, you know? So without Kaz, I think it would be a different group. What's your favorite Kaz? <laughs> Um, I've had a few chasms in my life. One of the very first classes I sat in, studio classes, and he said, take a look, man, you have to play it like a spanky. And everybody looked around, what? A spanky? You know, one of those things. And somebody finally said, you mean a slinky? Oh, my favorite chasm, and I get this all the time. No, 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 Jerry, Jerry, Jerry! That one, definitely that one. That one, or, take a look, Jenny, we need to start over. And I, you know how many times I started over? So I'll just tell a quick story. When we were driving, we, the quartet went to play. Where were we coming from, even? Kind of a lesson for um, Dale Clevenger, so principal horn in Chicago Symphony. We were all in the car together. But as we were driving back, Cass fell asleep, and he woke up. And it just kind of shot up out of his sleep. Skank! <laughs> bolts up and goes, SKANK! And of course I was like, what? He said, SKANK! SKANK! And I said, I said... He smelled a dead skunk. Yeah.
you know, the faint smell of skunk. And Kaz had said skank, you know, of course he's, he speaks several languages and might have gotten something a little mixed up. And as did we finally finish laughing, Jerry asked Kaz. What, what are you talking about? He goes, you know, skank, skank, it's, it sprays when it's mad. That is, see, when you, when you said Kazism, that was the first thing that sprang to my mind because that was probably my favorite moment of him. With Kaz's coaching and encouragement, the group had positive attitudes about their upcoming performance at IHS. How are you feeling about uh, IHS? Are you guys prepared? Or? Yeah, we'll be there. We'll be ready. We've been rehearsing for a day and a half now. I think we cut it a little close out of necessity, just in terms of, you know, we didn't have time to get together. So, it should be pretty sharp, I hope. Yeah. I mean, we still have three days until we perform, although we really don't have any more rehearsals left, so... I believe that humor is one of the most useful tools to any artist. It makes the performer more accessible to the audience and incites optimism. I learned a great deal trailing the Four Hornsmen. I learned that professional musicians aren't gods, but they aren't just normal people who happen to be amazing at the French horn. Their abilities, experiences, and passion make them extraordinary. That said, Humor makes these great artists accessible. We're going to change the order up just a little bit tonight, so we'll announce the pieces from the stage for the order. The first piece we call, we're kind of a progressive quartet, so we call this the legal union of two people regardless of sexual orientation of Figaro by Mozart. <laughs> Thank you.